Yesterday's price is not today's price. And Jordan Love will be the highest paid player in NFL history. Some illuminating comments from Adam Schefter when he joined ESPN Milwaukee yesterday. And while Packers fans might not be totally on board, might not totally understand why, there's a simple math problem that tells us not only will Jordan Love be the highest played, paid player in NFL history, not only should Jordan Love be the highest paid player in NFL history, but come week one, Jordan Love has to be the highest paid player in NFL history. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you're here, join us in the comments. Tell us what you think on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack, and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you never miss an episode. Adam Schefter. Joined ESPN Milwaukee yesterday, June 18th, to talk Green Bay Packers, Jordan Love contract extension, and said, I don't think Jordan Love is taking less than Trevor Lawrence. Of course, Trevor Lawrence just got a contract that makes him, by average annu annual value, tied for Joe Burrow as the highest paid player in the NFL, making $55 million in average annual salary. Well, line up Jordan Love and Trevor Lawrence right next to one another, and I think you have a pretty clear answer who you would rather have right now if you're an NFL GM. And I think that answer is pretty clearly Jordan Love. Say what you will for the can't-miss prospect of it all of Trevor Lawrence, but he's had several seasons as a starter in the NFL now and has accumulated the same number of playoff wins as Jordan Love and has not in that same time accumulated a resume that reaches anywhere near the same highs as that of Jordan Love. But ultimately, we, we have to think about as, as Packers fans, as the general Packers commentary, does it make sense to give this huge contract to Jordan Love. If, if you look at it very simply, for, for those of you watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scani six pack, you, you have seen this before. You, you have seen what I'm going to show you before. And that that is very simply the, the record of, of Jordan Love through you know, the, the tail end of last season. If you go through weeks 11 to 18, he was the best quarterback in football easily easily put that graph up there completion percentage percentage above expected and epa per play jordan love up there all alone with with brock purdy even if you expand that out because i know so much of the conversation has been based on you know he showed you eight weeks eight weeks of stuff but if you expand that out down to weeks six through 18 and playoffs using the same metrics Jordan Love, based on completion percentage above expected and EPA per play, sure does look like, if not the best quarterback in the NFL, one of the best, someone who, if you are just looking at the numbers, maybe this is a guy who should have been really part of the conversation for the MVP award. Had the most touchdown passes in the regular season. He and Dak Prescott. And then Jordan Love outshined him in that playoff game. Of course, you know, e even with the downs, you, you bake that all into the numbers. And Jordan Love looked like a top five quarterback last season. Definitely top 10 easily. And when, when you think about the fact that it was maybe, maybe, maybe just top 10. Okay, just top 10. Is top 10 good enough to get you a $50 million contract to make you the highest paid player in NFL history? The quarterback market is booming right now. Quarterbacks are getting paid what feels like ridiculous sums of money. Maybe even more so than 
year over year when we look at contracts that quarterbacks get and they just continue to explode and explode and explode. It feels like now, maybe even more, that these quarterback contracts are exploding beyond the, the regular, you know, <laughs> exponential metrics that we always expect. But the quarterback market is booming because the salary cap is booming. There's some, there's some nitty gritty sports economics here that I, I'm going to do my best to explain, not make it super dry because it does tell an interesting story about where we are now and why Jordan Love's going to get the contract that he's going to get. And as a, you know, uh, economist by training, by education, turned sports, sports fanatic, sports talker about her, uh, this is, this is my bread and butter right here. So, so nerd out with me for just a minute. We'll be getting to the numbers and tell you about why the Jordan Love contract, it's going to feel like an aberration, but it's, it's a feature, not a bug. The salary cap itself. The, the total amount that NFL teams can charge to the cap each year has gone way up. These total cap numbers are courtesy of Spotrack. Normally, the salary cap increases year over year by about 7%, around 7% on average. Heading into 2024, this upcoming season, the NFL salary cap is up a whopping 13.6%, basically double of what is normal. But part of the reason that it's way, way, way up is because of the pandemic. Part of the reason we are getting this massive increase in the salary cap right now is because this is not just the first time we've gotten this big double up of a salary cap increase. This is the second time we've gotten an increase of about twice what was normal. In 2022, the salary cap also jumped over 14%, over 14%, over double of what we would on average, expect the salary cap to jump. But in 2021, the salary cap shrank nearly 8%. Something that has otherwise never happened. Not just on that degree of a shrink of 8%. Salary cap doesn't shrink in the NFL. Think, think about and not getting in, in not to be too contemporary about the analysis of it all, but inflation always exists at some baseline level. So if you're just factoring in a, you know, with a 3% increase in, in inflation year over year, the salary cap, you should expect it to go up to some degree just to keep pace of the value of the dollar. But it's also the NFL, a bit, a giant business that is still king. So the salary cap is always increasing in 2021 when it shrank. That's a complete aberration, but you have that because of some dissatisfaction with sports overall, viewership a little bit down. You have no ticket sales to get in the gate, so your shared revenue is down. You have a, a real decrease in revenue in the 2020 season that leads to a decline in the salary cap in 2021. In 2022, when the cap then increased over 14%, it added, effectively does this, right? It adds that 7% that the cap usually adds year over year, right? But then makes up that other 7%. But that still leaves you short another 7 Because if you were at this baseline heading into 2021, you go down two pegs right? Go down 14 or go down, go down eight rather go down eight. You come up a seven to get you back to baseline. You go up a seven to get you your normal increase, but you missed one year of growth in there where normally by 2022, you should have gone up 14% based on 2020 numbers should be up 14% from 2020, but you're only up 7% from 2020. So we got this second doubling up of the salary cap increase this year. So the quarterback cap hits that we're seeing right now for these monster deals for Trevor Lawrence, for Jared Goff, they really aren't that outrageous when you put it into context of the percentage of the salary cap that these contracts are all eating up. So the quarterback market is booming. The $50 million quarterback is a new feature of this booming cap. And these, these 
next contract details and numbers are courtesy of over the cap. Think for a minute. What, what are these six folks? They, they are the six highest paid quarterbacks by average annual value. All have in common. They are Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Jared Goff, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, and Jalen Hurts. What do all six of those guys have in common? They all are in order the six highest paid quarterbacks in the National Football League. They all make over $50 million in average annual value for their new contracts. And each of their new contracts were all signed this offseason or one offseason ago. All the highest paid quarterbacks are all of these quarterbacks that have been signed since the salary cap has effectively fully recovered. Because teams project that that salary cap is going to go up year over year. So they are kind of spending and budgeting against that future money, that future cap increase. Well, when that cap decrease cap decreases in 2021, that throws off the numbers for not just 2021, but your number is going back. Your number is going back to contracts that you had signed prior to 2021. Contracts that you had signed prior to the pandemic in 2020. Contracts that you had signed in 2019, thinking that you were going to have a, a salary cap that was 14% above what it was in 2019. But instead, you got a salary cap that was basically stagnant. But all these quarterbacks now, the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL, are quarterbacks that have been signed in the last you know, one year and some change. Quarterbacks all signing with the salary cap fully recovered. And that makes sense when you look at some of the outliers uh, on this deal. Right? All, all the outliers in the QB contract market all make sense when you put it through the lens of the salary cap mess that happened because of the pandemic. Patrick Mahomes, he's making $45 million in average annual value. Not, not doing too bad, bad for himself. But that's the same as Kirk Cousins' new deal. Mahomes' extension came in 2020 with a ton of uncertainty about the direction of the cap, assuming it was probably going to go down. Josh Allen, perhaps the second best quarterback in football. He's making $43 million per year. That's a bargain bin deal for Josh Allen. A bargain bin deal that was signed in 2021 when the cap shrank. So Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes got a really bad deal here. If you look at it in a slightly different direction, Daniel Jones, he had that deal that the Giants gave him, a deal that everyone clowned. But now he's making $40 million in average annual salary. He's tied with Matt Stafford and Dak Prescott as the 12th highest paid quarterback. Yeah, it's a bit overvalued, but it doesn't look nearly as bad now as it did then. Not with the way the quarterback contract market is booming. Nobody, nobody who is being signed now on the right side of 30 is getting less than $50 million anymore. No way. Kirk Cousins, he got $45 million in average salary. He's 36 years old. Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr, they only got 37 and a half. But Carr's on the wrong side of 30. Aaron Rodgers is on the wrong side of 40. And, and let me be clear about the 30-year-old thing here. I'm not saying that quarterbacks above 30 years old aren't going to get $50 million because Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes are inevitably going to clear that $50 million watermark soon, even, even past 30. But if you don't have someone playing quarterback for your football team in the National Football League who you are giving a contract to when they are younger than 30 years old, who you are willing to pay $50 million. You simply do not have a franchise quarterback. You don't have someone who can win you a Super Bowl. And that leaves the $50 million man himself, Jordan Love. Going into the offseason, I think we all saw the floor as about $50 million. Jared Goff and Trevor Lawrence raised that floor. They did, making 53, 55. 
I think I'd rather have Jordan Love as my quarterback rather than Jared Goff. I think I'd rather have Jordan Love as my quarterback rather than Trevor Lawrence. Has to be compensated that way. Adam Schefter made a different appearance on another Wisconsin-based ESPN radio affiliate uh, about a month or two ago. And he suggested the Packers maybe, maybe use the franchise tag on Jordan Love as opposed to paying him this $50 million plus contract. Contract that'll put him, you know, probably as the highest paid player in football above that $55 million in average annual value. <laughs> Jordan Love's contract expires after this upcoming season, after the 2024 season. And if the Packers were to use the franchise tag on him, you you get Jordan Love at, you know, a slightly cheaper base salary number, given the fact that the way the franchise tag works is you're you're going to take the the average uh, aver average cap hit of those top five highest paid quarterbacks and put that together. So it's not going to be the top one, like otherwise Jordan Love is going to get. So if you tag Jordan Love, get him on a one-year deal, slightly cheaper salary number, but it doesn't make sense for either side. Jordan Love is incentivized to, to play – and, and get that contract signed rather than play on the franchise tag and not guarantee his money for, for the future. You, you want to get that guaranteed money for multiple years and players hate the tag. We all know that the Packers don't want it early either because you'd rather lock up a guy earlier for more than just one year. Because if you've been paying attention <laughs> to, to the sports economics of, of, of it all of, of the pandemic, the quarterback number, the quarterback market number is only going to continue to keep going up as the salary cap goes up, as we demonstrated earlier in the show. So why would the Packers tag Jordan Love for a year if or risk having to tag him for a year? And then if you get to the end of the season, Jordan Love balls out again. You've wasted a year of being able to spread out his salary based on a new signing bonus and that cap hit you have committed that 38 to $40 million, maybe more as definitely more just a one year, all in table cap hit in 2025. And Jordan love has you over a barrel to go pay him then. And you have no leverage to bring him back to the table other than, you are a team that needs, needs, needs to lock up your franchise quarterback. And Jordan Love is probably grumpy playing under the tag. And the Packers don't franchise tag players. Anyways, Packers have only used the tag five times in history. Devontae Adams, right? But a Green Bay Packer has never played under the franchise tag before. Never. It's an organizational philosophy thing that the Green Bay Packers just don't do this even though the Packers have used the franchise tag five times in every single instance that the Green Bay Packers have used the franchise tag on a player, that player has either been traded or signed an extension before week one. Dorsey Levins came real close in 1998, but signed an extension three days before week one started. The Packers have never had a player play under the tag. Ever. Doesn't make sense, especially not for a quarterback. There is a world in which making Jordan Love the highest paid quarterback, the highest paid player, highest paid in NFL history is not worth it. There is a reality. There's a reality that although we saw greatness from Jordan Love in 2023, he can't replicate it. He can't replicate anything close to it. There's a reality there. But if you don't have a quarterback, you are lost in the wilderness. Ask the Chicago Bears. You need to lock him up. The Packers have a tough, tough task ahead of them. Russ Ball, Ryan Gutekunst. And yesterday's price is not today's price. And today's price for a starting quarterback in the NFL is... 
$53 million. That might be the floor. So wait on for week one where Jordan Love will start the season as the highest paid player in NFL history in Brazil, making a Brazilian dollars. Thank you for listening to today's edition of the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Uh, we're going to be back with you again tomorrow. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, we are already here in a, in a brand new room, brand new environment, uh, traveling. Have a, have a great new travel setup ready to go. Um, we'll be back talking more. Packers, Badgers, Brewers, Bucks, and beyond here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. The only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I've been your host, Kedrick's Numbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick's Numbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. You can also listen to the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack, where you can see things like uh, little charts that I throw on the screen to tell you about how great Jordan Love is, has been, and will continue to be for the rest of time. <laughs> While you're there, hit the subscribe button. Leave a nice comment. Tell me, you think Jordan Love is going to be the highest paid player, player in NFL history come week one? Is it going to be worth it? Are you worried about it? I've had conversations. People are nervous. People are nervous about making that commitment to Jordan Love. Tell me why. Until we talk to you again soon. Go Pack Go.